So I'm going to talk today about some of the research that I'm doing comparing uh, using wheat as a cover crop to using cereal rye. So the first question I ask folks when they ask me about what kind of cover crop should I use, should I be using wheat or should I be using cereal rye, is what do, they, what do you want it to do for you? What does your grower want it to do for them? So are they looking to just keep the ground covered for erosion control? Do they want to build up soil, their soil microbes? Do they want to be recycling nutrients, adding nitrogen? This one is clearly near and dear to my heart. Are they looking for weed management both over the winter? So reducing the seed bank of things like common chickweed, annual ryegrass, the hen bits, the dead nettles, and mare's tail that you see around. Alleviate compaction, other benefits. So asking these questions helps us to figure out what is gonna be the best cover crop for a grower. And so a lot of these benefits then are gonna be tied to the amount of biomass that's produced. And this is where I'm gonna go for a lot of this talk today. So biomass is important for controlling weeds, for a lot of these soil health benefits and for root growth too, right? So anything where we're trying to get roots down into the soil, often having more above ground biomass is tied with that. But there's a balance here. So having too much cover crop biomass then, like if we can't get it in to spray it off in the spring, that can lead to a lot of residue. It can lead to planting difficulties. And this is the thing that we want to avoid, right? Nobody wants to have a reduced soybean stand, reduced corn stand. Um, and nobody wants a cover crop that's too big to be able to effectively terminate. So the balance between having enough biomass to give you these benefits, but still being able to deal with that biomass is really important. So I have a project uh, that I've done for three years now, um, two years funded by the Soybean Promotion Board, where we're actually comparing cereal rye and winter wheat as cover crops um, prior to soybean. Uh, and we're looking at a couple different seeding rates. We're looking at two different planting methods. So this is after corn and before soybeans. And we're measuring all sorts of things, including the cover crop biomass, including the winter annual weeds that are growing in the cover crops, right? So we're not managing the weeds when we plant the cover crop. Like they've done some weed management in this wheat, but if they hadn't, and if they had a thin stand of this, there would be winter annual weeds growing in there. That's what we're measuring. And then we also are measuring how those residues after we terminate the cover crops are influencing the weeds in the soybean. And so just a couple quick photos here. This is cereal rye taken in January of 2017 from above. So to give you a picture of the ground, what the ground cover looks like in cereal rye versus winter wheat. So if we're thinking about needing to cover the ground and shade the ground to help prevent the emergence of these winter annual weeds, uh, keep the ground covered for when we do have those um, random heavy rains over the winter, late fall, early spring, uh, then cereal rye might be a better option. But a lot of factors are going to influence um, like the amount of tillering and ground cover you get out of these, including the variety that you pick, the soil nitrogen status, the soil moisture, the temperature, um, the seeding rate. So a lot of factors influence these things. And this is an area of research that I'm interested in getting into in the future. But anyways, for now, what is really clear is that cereal rye does produce a lot more biomass than wheat, and especially in the spraying period. So this is a photo from last April. Here's wheat down the middle and cereal rye on either sides. It's a good 12, 16, 18, 18 inches taller than the wheat is. And just to show you that picture in a figure form, um, all of the blue bars here are the cover crop biomass that we harvest out of our rye. All of the orange bars are what we harvest out of our wheat. A couple years of data, so pale is 20, spring of 2016, darker is spring of 2017. We just collected our samples for 2018 last week. And then two different seeding rates, 100 pounds and 30 pounds. So important thing to note, we always get more biomass out of our rye than out of our wheat. And so the amount of biomass that we're dealing with here, we're terminating at this stage. So we're this is about up to here on me, well, about up to here on me. So it's not super tall, it's not a, a ton of biomass, but it's enough to give us some weed management. So I said that a lot of the weed management benefits are tied to biomass. So I took all of those, those bars, the, the blue and the orange bars, and now they're in green. I know it's confusing. I couldn't figure out what blue and orange together made, an ugly color. So we're looking at the cover crop biomass here in green. And so both wheat and rye, and that the, the axis down here tells you what treatment it is. And then I also plotted up in purple the winter annual weed biomass that's in that. So again, our chickweed, our hen bits, our dead nettles, our mare's tail, annual ryegrass, winter annual grasses, all of the things that would normally be growing in the field. And so the more cover crop biomass we have, the less winter annual weed biomass we have. 
So this is generally a good thing. And over here where we have more, it's from our rye treatments. Wheat, again, less biomass, going to have more of those winter annual weeds in it. So these are, again, those species that I mentioned earlier. We want to control those. We don't want those seeds in the soil, especially if you're going to be growing small grains. What about in the next crop though? So in the soybeans, so we terminate those in mid-April, late April this year. We plant soybeans about a month later, and then we, we're using herbicides in the soybeans. So we apply a PPO inhibitor and glyphosate at planting. And then what we do is we come back and we count the weeds periodically to see how well those cover crop residues are actually suppressing the weeds in the soybean. And so this is looking at, again, the cover crop biomass that we produced in all of those plots on this axis, and then related to the weed density in those plots on the y-axis here. And so this is just prior to our post application. So for us, this is kind of mid to late June in Lexington. So we're going in with our post-emergence glyphosate in this case to spray off the weeds that have emerged after planting come through this application here. So generally you see kind of a trend here. The more cover crop biomass we have, the fewer weeds we have that we have to kill with our post-emergence application. And this is generally a good thing for us, right? Yes, herbicides are effective. We don't have, we have um, populations that are resistant to these compounds in Western Kentucky. We don't have them here yet in Lexington, but the fewer weeds we have to kill with our herbicides, this is better for us. That's a lower chance that one of these is gonna be resistant to these chemicals, lowers the chance of resistance evolving and spreading throughout the state. So this is a good thing. If we can be suppressing the emergence in soybean with these residues, this is a win for us. In general, too, rye is in blue, wheat is in the orange, so you see more blue circles on this side with the higher biomass, more on this side with the fewer weeds in the soybean. More orange on this side with lower cover crop biomass, and arguably more, uh, more weeds emerging in the soybean, too. So, weed, winter annual weed biomass, less of it when you have more cover crop biomass, Fewer weeds emerging in the soybeans when you have more cover crop biomass. Weed management benefits greater when you have more cover crop biomass. On the other hand, you need to be able to deal with that biomass and that residue, uh, both in the spring and when it comes time to plant. So cereal rye is really notorious for being this tall. You go eat lunch, you take a nap, and then you come back and it's this tall, right? So if you have a really wet spring, you can't get it and terminate it in time. Uh, you can have a problem on your hands if you're not equipped to plant into residue. So just a couple of photos that I took from one of our trials in Lexington this year. Early April, our rye was this tall. Uh, two weeks later, it had grown 10 inches. Two weeks after that, it was four feet tall and heading out. Uh, now we tried it, like this is on purpose for our trials, right? This is what we're aiming to do. We're actually gonna plant corn into this trial tomorrow. Wish me luck. Um, but if, you don't, if you're not equipped to deal with this, you can have problems planting through that residue. You can have seed on the soil surface that leads to gaps in your stand. And this is never good. You're losing yield here and you're just gonna get weeds coming through this as well. So what is the best cover crop? Well, again, it depends on your goals. So if you're looking to get weed management out of it, then maybe cereal rye is gonna be a good option, but you have to make sure that you're prepared to deal with that residue. If you're not prepared to deal with that residue, it is probably not a good option for you or you have to terminate it as early as your planter will allow, your planter and your experience level will allow. So it's really finding that balance between the biomass production and the benefits that's the most important thing um, to answer that question about using wheat as a cover crop.